As you recall in previous lectures and previous videos, we have four types of functions, basic type of functions. Those that have no parameters, no return values. Those that return something but no parameters. Those have parameters that doesn't return anything and one that has all, all, all both of them. Well, we're going to discuss the third one right here, and this is one that actually passes a parameter in without a return value. Now, since it doesn't have a return value, it's going to be void, and uh, we're just going to do something very simple. We're going to say print x, and we're going to pass in a, uh, uh, a value, a value uh, an integer, and let's just go ahead and make it constant. And the reason I'm going to do this is... Uh, uh, x. And the reason I'm going to do this is just to show you that if you're passing in a value that doesn't change, then you should probably make it a constant. And this is just a safety mechanism. It's a, really a good programming practice. And uh, that is our prototype. And I'll go ahead and put that up there so you can see it. This is, uh, this is our prototype. Good habit to have a prototype. This is our uh, this is our header down here, print x, constant int x. Now let me point something out too. I'm going to go up here and make a little modification just to show you that it's possible. In the prototype, I actually don't have to name them. It just has to know the type and the order of the parameters passed in. And this is the uh, x right here. We, here we have to give it a name in the header. Uh, we have to give it a name. And we know this is the header because it looks exactly like the prototype except it doesn't have the semicolon right there okay and then here he is this see out the the value of x is and we'll put a little colon there and then x and l okay now let's call it Okay, this is the call to it, and the call to it, since it doesn't return type, it's a standalone statement. And that is the difference between the ones that return a type and those that don't. The ones that return a type have to be used in a place where the type is used itself to get the value of it. And this is just a standalone statement. We just say uh, print x, and then we'll pass it in the number 10. And it should print out the number 10. We will build it. Build solution. debug, start without debugging, and there said the value of x is 10. Okay, that's exactly what we wanted it to do. Again, let's review. This is the prototype up here. I'm passing in a value. You'll notice I didn't have to put the name right there. I can. I just don't have to put the name right there. And even if I do put a name right there, let's say why, it doesn't have to match the one in the header. It's just a placeholder. That's all it is. The one in the, place, uh, the, one in the uh, real function, that's the one that's important. I pass in x right there, I have to make sure I use it uh, exactly as it's printed. Here I'm calling print x, I'm passing in the value. Since it's a constant int y, I can pass that in. Now, um, let me go ahead and change this to take the constant off. Let me show you the difference there. It, you won't see a difference per se. I'll go ahead and build it. Build solution. Okay, debug, start without debugging, and there it is. It works exactly the same way, but if uh, I know that I'm not going to change anything inside the routine, I go ahead and make it a constant. Now, if I were to try to say uh, here uh, uh, x is equal to 10, since I didn't put the constant in x up there, it's going to let me do that, but what it will not do is it will not... Um, uh, allow me to, it will not change the uh, argument that I passed in. In other words, it will not affect the original 10. Or even if I did something like this, let's say I did uh, int number equal 100. Okay, and I passed in number. Okay, and then here I said uh, value of x is 10. If I were to say right here and say c out. number. All right, now here's the situation I have. I'm passing in number. 
which has the value of 100. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print it out. And it should say the value of x is 100. Okay. Here I change it to 10. And then I go back and I say the value of number is number. Okay. You would expect if since I changed it that it would take on the value of 10, but it's not going to. And the reason it's not going to is because this was passed in by value. It actually made a copy of the number and passed it in. So x right here is just a temporary copy of that number. What's going to happen is it'll say the value of x is 100. I'll change it to 10 here, but when I return back to this one, number will be unchanged. Okay, let's build that. Okay, debug, and you'll see there, okay, the value of x is 100, the value of number is 100 also. Again, I changed it to 10 before I went back, but it's unchanged up here. Why? Because, because x inside of here is just a copy. It's passed by reference, or passed by value. I just sent a copy in there, okay. Now, let me change this, okay? I'm going to make a change. I'm going to make a very simple change. Up here, I'm going to put in an ampersand or an and sign, as some people call it. And right here, I'm also going to put in an and sign, okay? Okay. So <clears throat> there I have my, uh, my function. I will say main, all right? Um, now, what I've done by putting the AND in there, what I've told C++ is pass in the actual item itself. In other words, we're going to change the original value. So, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is when I call print x, it's not just going to pass in a copy of it. It's actually going to pass in the actual address. x, in this particular case, takes on the value the location of the actual number itself. So whenever I modify it here, x equal 10, it will change the original. What do I expect to happen? What I expect to happen is I should say the value of x is 100, I'm going to change it to 10, and then here the value of number is 10. Okay, let's uh, build it. Build solution. Once exceeded. I don't really debugging. Ah, there it is. The value of x is 100. That's the original number. I changed it to 10 since I passed it in by reference, that and sign. It's actually accessing the actual item here. x in this particular case where I've got it highlighted is actually number. It's actually the address of number. So it's changing the original. Okay. Very important lesson. This is a, this is a somewhat uh, um, involved lesson and you probably need to review this a couple times you probably need to write the code a couple times and, uh, and, uh, and think about it think about how this works anyway uh, on to our next lesson